Are you hungry? You'll be hungry after it. You did not wash your neck. Take the brush and scrub it. Scrub it. Perhaps you won't smell quite so much today, Burns. Once again, it is my duty to remind you that we are not here to pamper you. You are here because God, in his wisdom, has chosen to make you orphans and dependent on the charity of others. <coughs> if ye suffer hunger or thirst for my sake, happy are ye. Who here is hungry? Who here is thirsty? Oh, surely one of you is hungry. Surely there is one hungry child in the school. Ah, there is one. Step four. Let us see who it is. Of course, this is the new girl, Jane Eyre. I know this child. She was sent here by her aunt, a benefactress of this school. Bring a stool so that we may all see her. Come here, girl. Children, it is my duty to warn you against this girl. Her name is Jane Eyre. Stun her. Guard yourselves against her. For I had it from her aunt who took her in that she is deceitful and refuses to submit. Look at her face. Does it not show? Fortunately, it's a plain face. Otherwise, who knows what winning ways she would employ her against the world. It's our duty to punish her body to save her soul and make sure that in Lowood she learns her place. Pushing your way in as usual, Burns. For your pains, you will sit in the corridor. <coughs> and you, Jane Eyre, may remove that look from your face. Oh, no. 
thing it's called. I've always had it. I think it is. Why is she so cruel to you? Miss Scatcherd. Oh, she dislikes me. I hate her. No, you mustn't hate Jane. I do. I hate her more than Miss Jane does. Who is she? Well, you hate me more. And why, in defiance of every precept and principle of this house, does her hair wave? It waves naturally, Miss Brockerhurst. Come here, Jane Eyre. Continue. We are not concerned with nature here. Scissors. You see, Miss Temple, we're overindulgent. Please! Away with her. It is our duty to mortify in these girls the lusts of the flesh. Take these relics of Satan and see they are burned. Stand on a stool for half an hour and meditate on the virtues of submission. No one will speak to you for the rest of the day. stand on yours.
early dying rapid. You know that, of course. Yes. I've made arrangements for her to go home. Oh, good. Yes. I had to come see you. You came to bid me goodbye. Are you going away? Yes. They are sending me home to my guardian. And the heather isn't green anymore. I'll be back. We shall have long talks again. You and I. Just as we used to. Long talks. <gasps> oh, Jim. I'm so tired. So tired. Stay with me. And be here. When I come back. I shall be here. And I will keep you warm. I will give you strength. You shall have all mine. And we'll stay together. Just you and me forever. And we'll live forever and ever. I'm so glad to have come upon you like this. I wanted a word with you. I understand you applied to a Mrs. Fairfax of Thornfield for the post of governess to a little girl. Yes. The governors are pleased to give references. Thank you. But they would like you to stay on at Lowood as a teacher. This request is something of an honor, Jane. Then I am sorry that the governor should have chosen you to make it. I have nothing but respect for them and for all that they have done at Lowood over the past few years. I have none for you, Mr. Brocklehurst. I have neither forgiven nor forgotten. I may tell them that in any case my mind is made up. I shall leave within a month. That's it. Does Mrs. Fairfax live alone? More or less. With the little girl? Aye, with her. Is Mr. Fairfax dead? Ain't no Mr. Fairfax. Dad, we've been expecting you. Will you come and speak to us now? do, my dear. What a long journey you've had. You must be cold. Come and sit down by the fire. It is Mrs. Fairfax, isn't it? Yes, you are quite right. Won't you take off your bonnet? Oh, thank you. I'm so glad you've come. It will be very pleasant to have a companion. Thornfield is a fine old hall, but it can be very lonely. Shall I have the pleasure of meeting Miss Fairfax tonight? Miss Fairfax? My pupil. Oh, you mean Miss Barron. I've asked Sophie to bring her down just to greet you. She is not your daughter, then. 
Good heavens, no. I've no family. She's Mr. Rochester's ward. Mr. Rochester? The owner of Thornfield. I thought Thornfield belonged to you. Oh, good heavens, I what an idea. I'm only the housekeeper. But Mr. Rochester is away most of the time, travelling, so we rarely see him. Ah, here they are. Come, Miss Adele, and greet the lady who is to teach you. This is Miss Eyre. C'est là, ma gouvernante? Mais oui, certainement. C'est française. Mais oui. Oh, vous prenez français? Oh, oui. But I had no idea that my pupil was to be a little French girl. Ah, but it's merveilleux. You speak French. Oh, madame, thank you for my governess. I hope you'll be very happy and learn a great deal. And now Miss Eyre is tired, and I shall show her to her room. Oh, for well, Miss Eyre, very pleased to meet you. Bonne nuit, Adele. We shall meet in the morning. You'll have no difficulty with her. She's a little vain, I think, but then she's French. She related to Mr. Rochester. I don't know, my dear. He brought her back from Paris a few months ago. Her parents, I think, died or abandoned her. Are you ready? Yes, I do. Yes, as you see, it's a fine house, but it needs to be lived in more. Parts of it are very old indeed. I might see ghosts then. <laughs> None that I have ever heard of. But they do say the Rochesters were a very wild race. Perhaps that's why they now sit tranquil in their graves. We are this way, my dear. That way leads to the upper floor, but it is seldom used. Most of the bedrooms in this wing are in use. It saves work to keep the rooms together. Uh, you will teach Miss Adele in here, and this is your room. Oh. Oh, it's... I hope you'll like it. I thought you'd prefer something small and cosy. Delightful. I'll call you when supper's ready. If you need anything, I'll be downstairs. What's that? Grace Poole, I expect. She works here. She's a little, um, eccentric. Lovely. I want you to be glad for you. I'm so glad you're here. 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 <laughs> well, come along. Where did you live before you came to Thornfield? With Mama. But she went to the Holy Virgin. So Mr. Rochester brought me here. You knew him before? Certainement. He was a friend of Mama. He brought pretty things and me too. But now I do not see him anymore. But you would like to see him not just for the pretty things he brings you? Oh, yes. But it is nice that he brings me presents. When shall we begin our lesson? Now. And now, let's go and look in the garden. All right. Not just the flowers, but some of the animals are giving the soil. You see, some of the animals destroy the flowers, and some of them have them destroyed. Oh, Mr. Rochester, I'm so glad you're back. 
sort of man is Mr. Rochester? What sort? Do you like him? I have no cause to do otherwise, my dear. He's a good master. What manner of man is he? He is um, unexpected. Some think him perhaps peculiar. In what way? It's hard to say. He's travelled the world a good deal and seen many things. He's a hard man to understand. What of Grace Poole? Why does he keep her on here? I've no idea. I was trying to move out of your way. Can I help you, sir? You might fetch my horse. get back before the dark comes. Is Miss Eyre, sir. She has just returned. Let Miss Eyre be seated. Did you expect a present, Miss Eyre? No, sir. Are well, you not fond of presents, then? I hardly know, sir. I've had little experience of them. Hmm. You'd do better to be more like Adele. She demands her presents. You beat about the bush. I have less confidence in my desserts, sir, than she has. 
generally, Miss Eyre, or in this instance? In this instance, sir. Generally, I know what to expect. You've been here uh, six weeks? Yes, sir. And you came from? Uh, Lowood, sir. A charitable institution. How long were you there? Ten years. Ten years. You must be tenacious of life. But then you have the look of another world in your face. Were your parents? I never knew them, sir. And who recommended you here? I advertised. Mrs. Fairfax answered my advertisement. I'm very glad I am that I did so, sir. Miss Eyre has proved invaluable. Flattery will not bias me, Mrs. Fairfax. I shall judge for myself. She began by felling my horse. Well, <clears throat> what did you learn at Lowood? Music? Did you play? Uh, a little, sir. Oh, God. They all play a little. Go to the piano. Play something. do indeed play a little. I was not wrong then in my assessment. You're very cool. An orphan child of low degree. Where do you find such coolness? Out of my head, sir. The one I see on your shoulder? Yes, sir. And has it other furniture of the same kind within? It is well stocked, I hope, sir. What are you about, Miss Eyre, to let Adele sit up so late, take her to bed? I'm not to do, Miss Eyre. It will be here. It will be here. Miss Eyre. Be rude. It's partly his nature and partly. Partly what, Mrs. Fairfax? Doubtless he has painful thoughts to help you. You must not take offense. I did not, nor will I. Though that will be of little consequence to him. It is of consequence to me, my dear. Good night. Good night. We must drain the fields. It's too costly, sir. Tenants can't farm on land that's flooded with water. They lose crops and we lose rent. It's false economy. Would have been into the figures. We'll go into them again. I want the field drained.
take it. You genuine daughter of Paris. You see, Miss Eyre, how you women uh, value us. Leave her, she's happy. Take it to your room, Adele, and uh, gloat over it there. Oh, monsieur, je veux que ma fille me soit. Let her go. Believe me, she has no need of you for a while. You examine me, Miss Eyre. You find me handsome? No, sir. <laughs> Upon my word, you are blunt. What would you say next, that I'm lame? Well, you are no prettier than I am handsome, but you are nothing if not honest, and you know that already. Sit down, sit down. If you please. You must allow me to give orders, Miss Eyre, if for no other reason than that I am 20 years older. Would you not agree? Surely, sir, that depends on what use you made of your time. <laughs> By God, you have a point. Well, then, have I no right to hector you? I'm in a hectoring mood, sir. Of course, sir. Your claim wins on the grounds that I am employed here and you are not. Still, I like your bluntness. It's unusual in a woman. Though I dare say, in truth, you are no different from the rest. Yes, you're right, neither am I. Well, talk to me, Miss Eyre. Don't just sit there. About what, sir? About what? About anything. Can't you see that I'm in a mood to talk? Tell me how you get your peace of mind. Remorse is the poison of life. Dread it if ever you are tempted to err. What then? What could ever tempt you? Where are you going? To put Adele to bed, sir. Never mind, Adele. She is happy. As her mother was. You saw how she took possession of that box? So her mother took possession of me. I have been green, too, sir. <laughs> Grasty. Is Adele your child, sir? No, she is not. Although her mother presented her to me as such. But not that green, by God, Miss Eyre, no. Not that green. No, she is the daughter of an itinerant musician with whom her mother finally ran off, clutching in her little hand the pieces of jewelry that I had uh, given her. She left the child in Paris. I brought her here a year ago when I'd heard her mother had died. The child is, of course, illegitimate. Knowing her antecedents, you will no doubt think less of your protégé now. The child cannot be blamed for her mother's faults. Confound it. Have you none of your own? Well, good night.
I see you also paint a little. Yes. A little more than you play. You see, I'm in a more encouraging mood today. A little more, sir. Do you never laugh? Frequently. But I do not amuse you. <laughs> By God, you amuse me, Miss Eyre. Uh, you may uh, take tea with me later. Cheer me up. It's a new role for me, sir, that of court jester. But if it cheers you up, I'm happy. Who is it? I heard a sound outside my door and, and laughter. I came out into the passage and Shall I fetch Mrs. Fairfax? No, no. Let her sleep. Say nothing. I want no one to know what you've heard. Isn't Grace cool, sir? Yes, I think so. What do you mean? I can't explain. You saved my life.
idea what an escape we had last night. Mr. Rochester was near, burned in his bed. Indeed, Mrs. Becker? He fell asleep, leaving the candle alight. Well, it's a wonder you didn't hear something or smell burning. Not a thing. But then I'm a sound sleeper. Mr. Rochester, I trust, has suffered no ill effects. Oh, no, no. He was hailed this morning when he left. Left? Yes, he went out to breakfast. He's gone to Mr. Ashton's place. A very brilliant party is assembled there. And then, of course, Blanche Ingram, too. She's a great beauty here about. And they do say that she and Mr. Rochester... Excuse me, my dear. I don't know. It is nearly three weeks. It is long in this far. Perhaps Mr. Ingram will not let him go. Perhaps he is a prisoner. The fish is beautiful. Don't you wish you were beautiful yourself? Flowers can be beautiful, Adele. See how delicate the petals are. The shape of the bloom, and it joins the stem. And let's start again, shall we? And I shouldn't bother to sign it, but you didn't do a little better. This is Fairfax. This is Fairfax. Fairfax, confound it, we have guests. Ah, we have been staying for uh, not a while. You ought to be on the station. <laughs> yes, come right in, please. We'll go right into the drawing room. We'll do our best to refresh you. Oh, thank God. Come along, please. <laughs> is magnificent, but I should arrange it differently. Oh, how? I should have all the furniture French. Ah, and me. Would you uh, rearrange me too? You? Oh, you I should leave like an old but well-loved oak chest. <laughs> She's the daughter of an enigma. You think? He says this is war. <laughs> Wouldn't you? <laughs> Adele, 
girl has been captured by her governess and uh, led away. Oh, she's a kind little thing. I think she's pretty. <laughs> no, I mean the governess. Oh. I'll not go back, Edward. Not till you keep your promise and show me your boyhood hiding place. I warn you, we shall be utterly alone. <laughs> your threats are mere promises. <laughs> oh, there you are. They're just about to come out of the dining room. I'll take Adele into the drawing room. Perhaps we'll ask Tracy to come for her. But Mr. Rochester expressly asked that you remain, my dear. You may greet them when they're coming. I thought, Edward, you were not fond of children. Not am I. Then what induced you to take charge of such a little doll? <laughs> I picked her up in a fit of absence of mind. <laughs> you should send her to school. <laughs> she has a governess. Oh, the little thing I've seen with her. <laughs> You should hear Mama on the subject of governess. Oh, <laughs> my dear Lily Bly, don't mention governess. I suffered a martyrdom from them. Take my advice, Mr. Rochester. Send the little girl to school. I will consider it, Lady. And now, Signor Eduardo, furbish up your lungs, as they're wanted in my royal service. <laughs> we shall sing a romantic song. Know that I dote on romance, so you must sing con spirito. <laughs> Youth's first season made for joys Love is then our duty She alone who that employs Well deserves her beauty Let's be gay while we may Beauty's a flower despised in decay Youth's first season made for joys Love is then our duty. Let us drink and sport today. Ours is not tomorrow. Love with youth flies swift away. Age is not but sorrow. Dance and sing, time's on the wing. Life never knows the return of spring. Let us drink and sport today. Ours is not tomorrow. Oh, take a opera. Where are you going? To bed, sir. I'll send Sophie for Adele. Look at me.
You're depressed. What about? Nothing, sir. Nothing. I'm not depressed. But you are. There are tears in your eyes. You see? One has slipped from the lash and fallen. I excuse you tonight. No mystery there, sir. We all know what that means. <laughs> what? A joker? A fool, sir? Me, sir? No, sir. Not you, sir. <laughs> and on the other hand, that uh, could mean a journey. A honeymoon? No. <laughs> the ten of diamonds. Now, that's fire. Fire everywhere. Now, that worries me. It's the fire in your heart, Edward. <laughs> <laughs> There is someone to see you, sir, in the morning room. At this hour? He says it's very important, sir. He's come a long way. From the West Indies. <laughs> the Joker was a journey, Edward. He is the stage. And what does that mean? Oh. Oh, that life's an idiot. Name Mason. Yes, sir. What is wrong? You can destroy me. Destroy my hopes, anyway, my dreams. Jane, what would you do if all shunned me? I should not shun you, sir. Could you dare censure for my sake? What is it? Tell me. Go to bed. Take no more of it. Go. and he took it upon himself to finish the port, you gentlemen, so oh, carelessly oh, 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 So should our consciences trouble us all. Go back to your rooms. It was nothing. Please. <laughs> <laughs> 
Good You have a sponge in your room and some smelling salts. No questions, not now. Give me the sponge. You gonna turn sick at the sight of blood? I think not, sir. See that no one is in the hall. Still awake. I could not sleep until I knew you were safe. How is Mr. Mason? He will be all right. He's with the doctor. And the danger you thought you were in last night? Is that past? I can't vouch for that until Mason is out of England. Which will be soon, I hope. He did not seem a man willfully to injure you. No, but unintentionally he might. Sit down. And what of Grace Poole? Why do you keep her on here? I have no choice. But surely. Bear with me for a while. Don't press me for answers. I, I count on you more than you know. Uh, advise me, Jane. I'll put a case to you of a boy, a young man. Spoiled and indulged from youth who commits Capital error. I don't say crime, but error. The consequences are dreadful. The only escape is exile and senseless pleasure. And then he meets a woman. A fine woman with qualities he has not met in 20 years. He has a chance of living like a human being again. 
Only convention stands in the way. Can he ask her to defy it? You talk of yourself, Mr. Rochester. Yes. We are each responsible to God for our actions. I, I do not think we can ask others to share the burden. Least of all, Miss Ingram. Don't you think if I married her, she would regenerate me with a vengeance? Since you ask me, sir, no, I do not. You do not like her. Come, be honest. I do not think she is for you. Oh. Presumption. And who is for me, then? Have you seen someone you can recommend? You have grown attached to Thornfield. I have been happy here. Would it grieve you to leave it? Leave it? When I marry, I should not want to live here. Of course. Adele will go to school. I will find another post. I must go in, sir. I'm cold. Jane. Please, let me go. Wait. Let me go. Jane. Why do you confide in me like this? What are you and she to me? Do you think that because I am poor and plain, I have no feelings? I promise you, God has gifted me with wealth and beauty. I should make it as hard for you to leave me now as it is for me to leave you. But he did not. Yet my spirit can address yours as if both had passed through the grave and stood before him equal. Jane. Let me go, sir. I love you. I love you. Don't make me foolish. Foolish. I need you, what is Blanche to me. I know what I am to her. Money to manure her father's lands with. Marry me, Jane. Say you'll marry me. You mean it? You torture me with your doubts. Say yes. Say yes. No man meddle with me, or I will keep her. Keep her. Fernie, you won't mind uh, leaving Thornfield for this. How should I mind if you were here? And we'll travel, too. You know, ten years ago, I flew through Europe half mad, disgust, and rage. Now I'll return with an angel as my guide. <laughs> I'm not an angel. Don't expect it of me. What do you expect of me? For a while, you'll be as you are now. Then you'll turn cool and capricious and stern, and I'll have much to do to please you. But when you're well used to me, perhaps you'll like me once again.
I'd like to see Mr. Rochester. He's at the church, sir. The master's getting married today. Have you the ring? Edward Fairfax Rochester, wilt thou have this woman for thy lawful wedded wife? For better or worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness or in health, until death you do part. I will. And wilt thou, Jane Eyre, have this man for thy lawful wedded husband? For better or worse. An insuperable impediment exists. Go on. Mr. Rochester, I cannot go on. What is the nature of this impediment? Mr. Rochester has a wife now living. She's a Thornfield Hall. Impossible. I would know of it. I saw her there last April. She's my sister. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rochester, but it is not right. Oh, my God, it is not right. Only right to condemn a man to eternal hell. But you should see my wife, but I owe you that much. And this girl. You should see her too, Jane. I insist, come. Such is the soul conjugal embrace I am ever to know. And how are we today, Mrs. Moore? We're tolerable, thank you, sir. Snappish, but not outrageous. Bertha Mason Rochester. Mad through three generations, although I and my naivete was never told. Who even tried to murder me on our wedding night. Look at her, Jane. Look at her. For I loved her once as I love you now. What should I do with her? Tell me. Confine her to an asylum for the care of strangers where they will beat her and throw cold water on her? Have you ever been in an asylum? Sit with me and tell me the story of your day. 
shall you hold my head on your breast whilst I sleep? Shall you? Shall you? out at last. You shut yourself in your room and grieve alone. Not one word of reproach. to be my punishment. I didn't mean to wound you like this. Do you believe that? I wouldn't hurt you, not for the world. What was I to do? Confess everything I should have lost you. I might as well have lost my life. You have lost me, Edward. And I have lost you. Punish me a little longer, Jane. I have been through. For the first time, I have found what I can truly love. Don't take it away from me. I must leave you. You will miss me. I will not live as your mistress. Is that all that's important to me? Mrs. Edward Rochester. Can you really believe I think that? What am I supposed to believe? You say you love me. How can you think of leaving me then? Edward, what would I be as your mistress? A hanger-on, a dependent with, with no place of my own, no right to be here. All rights would be on your side, none on mine. Right? You talk like a lawyer. Everything that's mine is yours. What more can I give you? I want nothing. Nothing. Only you. Stay, Jane. When I come to you, Edward, I come to you as an equal. I will not be less. Even for the man I love. You mean to go one way in the world and let me go another? Who in the world will care what we do? I care. You have a wife still living. Living? <laughs> she still lives. In whatever state God has seen fit to visit on her, she still lives. She cannot help what she is. I will not slip past her slyly in the night to take my place in your bed. You fling me back then. Upon the life I lived before. You need no more truth that than I. We are born to strive and endure. You will forget me before I forget you. You make a liar of me with such language. Go then, go. That's all I've seen to you. Wait. 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 
we can buy. We just don't buy. She's not from around here, do you think, Sindri? I've never seen her. You collapsed on the moors. Who are you? Can we send for someone you know? No, it does get very dark here. Sinjin often remarks, so what he should have to complain about, I'm sure I don't know, for he's never here. He works very hard. He's devoted to the church. Yes, he wants to go to India. Doesn't he, die as a missionary? We are recovered, I see. Yes, Mr. Rivers. Thanks for calling. Her name is Jane Eyre. She's a governess. She left her last post for reasons that are personal and private, and she doesn't wish to answer any questions. She wants to find work, and she's to stay here till she does. Naturally, we said that you would help her. Naturally. My sisters seem to have everything arranged. I'll do what I can. Thank you. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have some reading to do. No, he just stood there stuttering, getting quite red in the face. Oh. <laughs>
Don't you think you walk enough miles in this parish, St. John? I'd like very much to go. I've uh, found you some work. I doubt you'll like it, though. I'll be the better judge of that when you tell me what it is. Lovely church. Must give you pleasure to work here. The duty is weariness of death. Does that shock you? Your sister told me you wanted to go to India. You disapprove. I could serve God in many ways. I need to serve in a large way. I have to... I have to serve my Savior. I have to serve my Savior. Do you understand? I shall do it with all my power, all my strength. And who comes with me on that road must do the same. You're not married? No. Were you fleeing from an entanglement? I have been loved. Let me show you something. I've had it in mind for some time to open a school here for the village children. They have no access to education and therefore no hope of progress. You have a need to serve, too, I think. That's the only reason I offer it to you. The pay is poor, 30 pounds a year. But you can live with us. I accept. I wanted only to know. I'm very tired. If you'll excuse me, I think I'll go to bed. Yes, it's hard work teaching the children all day, St. John. I think it's time they all went to bed. Very uh, well, since I'm to be in a minority. Good night, Mary. Good night. Good night. Jane, thank you for playing. Good night. Oh, kiss Jane too, St. John.
To go back is nothing but death. To go forward is fear of death, and life is the last thing beyond it. I will go forward. So mistrust and timorous ran down the hill, and Christian went on his way. All right, children, you can bring me the book. Get on now. of your mind you can't use here. What will you do with all your accomplishments? Save them for their horses they will keep. Have you ever thought they may be wanted now, at this minute, in some corner of the world where God's voice is not heard at all? Has that never occurred to you? The school is enough for me. Is it? Is it really, Jane? Have you ever looked into your heart and asked yourself if you can't do more? I did. And the moment I did, I knew that my whole life until then had been a waste, a desert. I knew at that moment that I had been chosen, that God had an errand for me that would take me far away, carrying his light into the regions of darkness. It was as if someone had lit a lamp that I never realized was there. You would have loved St. John. Of man? Of woman. I was thinking of you. It has its place, but we must all bow to a higher love. Can we love one without the other? You place too much importance on human love. Oh, there are more ways to happiness than through the flesh. It often seems strange to me that so few discover this in the course of their lives. And clearly, clearly we are not all made of the same clay. There are some who have been given a strength far beyond their needs. I urge them to know that strength, what it is and why it was given. I bring an offer straight from God to take their place in the ranks of his children. I say, come with me. I claim you for my sovereign service. I claim you for this great work. Join me and have no fear. God will protect you, for it is his work you have undertaken. Jane, I leave for India in six weeks. Come with me. God intended you to serve as he intended me. Think what you could do there. You could run schools, help in hospitals. It would be glorious work. I'm not fit for it. I've no vocation. But you have. You don't realize it yet, but you have, as much as I. I've watched you day after day and seen it grow and develop. Don't you see? God sent you here for a purpose to join with me in this great work. I know it must seem strange to you at first, but you'll see what impetus you'll draw from our marriage. Marriage? Marry me. Together our strength will more than double what we each have, and we'll give it all to God. This will fill an empty place for you, I know it. Work is the best balm, the best healer. Wrench your heart away and fix it on your maker. But if we don't love each other, we can learn. Jane, we'll work. We'll spend ourselves in the service of God, you and I, together in some foreign land, loving God and who knows, finding we love each other. Isn't that the best way, isn't it? Say yes, Jane, say yes. No. I need yours, I never needed anyone. Oh, help me, help me, Jane, help me. Give me your strength as well, for I need it. I could give you means nothing to you, nothing. You ask me to marry you and speak no word of love between us. Oh, God. Better to shut me in a tomb and let me die. For I have been loved, St. John. Loved. Oh, dear heaven, I have been loved. I must go to him. 
may be too late. I must go. You're rejecting God. No. I'm finding them. To his people. And the love they have for each other. Each other's religion. Other. You cannot love just God alone. Lied to him. It was terrible, Miss Air. She got away from Grace Pool. She climbed onto the roof and stood there shouting. Mr. Rochester tried to reach her, but she jumped. She killed herself on stones there. And Mr. Rochester? The floor gave way beneath him and he fell through. He's not dead, Miss Air, but. Where is he? At Fern Dean with Mrs. Fairfax. Miss Air. A burning timber fell across his face. He's blind. Stone blind. Is that you? Is anyone there? Yeah, boy. Hmm? There's no one there. Whom did you think it was? Hmm? Is anyone there, I said? Who is it? me like this. Hmm? <laughs> Cry. No need for tears. How long can you stay? Hmm? Uh, an hour or two? Stay a little while. Or do you have some fretting husband waiting for you? No. No husband yet? Well, that's bad, Jane. You're not pretty. Can't be choosy. No, sir. Still, I'm surprised you've not been asked. I didn't say I'd not been asked, sir. Oh, I see. That's that's good, Jane. You should be married. Yes, sir. I think so. And so should you. You can't be choosy, sir, any more than I. <laughs> Perhaps not. Well, when is this 
wedding of yours. I'll uh, bring Adele home from school. Wedding, sir? The devil take it, didn't you say you were getting married? No, sir. Well, I'm sure some fool will find you soon enough. I hope so, sir. found me once before. I've come home, Edward. Let me stay. <laughs> 